guys, it's Beardly Honest, and guess what day it is? It's Try It Tuesday, and we've got a special edition because it's the Universal Young's Box. This month, I think we thought it was Austria based on the clues. We'll find out once we get in the box. We haven't peaked this month, so we don't know really what it is. But I think based on the clues, it was Austria. But before we get into the box, thank you guys so much for all the love you've been giving the channel, all the likes, all the comments, all the shares, and most importantly, the subscriptions. Uh, we're coming up on a year here on the channel, and also we're getting closer to 500. So whichever we hit first is when we'll do our next giveaway. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to check us out on BeardlyHonest.com. You can find our links to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on there, as well as our Contact Us page, which also has our P.O. box and a link to BeardlyHonest at gmail.com, but you can find all the links to those in the description of the, on the actual video. Let's get into the Universal Yums box. I know a lot of you guys have been picking up the box because of the, what we've been doing here on the channel, so I love that you guys are doing that. Uh, hopefully Universal Yums takes notice and they'll be able to kind of give us some codes or something for you guys to use. But uh, they're, they're kind of stringent based on how many subscribers you have before they give you any kind of uh, discounts or anything like that. So the quicker we get to 10,000 subscribers, guys, <laughs> the, be the better I'll have for you. Uh, so, oh yeah, it is Austria. Okay, cool. So the boxes of old used to have the tissue paper, but they started this year where they've got the index cards, which actually includes uh, some trivia on the country itself, but also lists everything that's in the box. It doesn't seem like there's too many things in this box this month. They look big. Yeah. So there's two levels of the Universal Studios box. There's the Yum box and the Yum Yum box. The Yum box is like 10 or 15 bucks, and then the Yum Yum box, which is what this is, has roughly 20 things in it. That's 11. 15 11. to 20. That's it? 11. Oh, wow. You get more things in the Yum Yum box. That's why we do it. But it's $25 flat rate inside the U.S., which includes shipping. Uh, I know some of our Canadian viewers say that it's a little bit more than what um, it is in the U.S. But let's dive into the box. It does come with a little booklet. But before we get into the Austria box, let's read the clue for next month's box. It says, this is the land where the sun always rises, where the yums are kawaii and full of surprises. On the, this wild adventure, you'll have to be brave, but at the end, we promise there'll be new yums to crave. I think Japan. They've already done Japan, haven't they? I don't, I don't, we haven't gotten Japan. The land where the sun always rises, where the yums are kawaii, K-A-W-A-I-I. -I, and full of suppressive. So maybe it is. That's the only reason I think, because of that word. Korea, there's none of the Korean places that are sun always rises, is it? Because they've, rises, they've done Taiwan, they've done Philippines, right? I think so. They've done. I mean, they've got to rotate Indonesia. back around, but. Yeah. Well, maybe it is Japan. I don't know. Kauai, the only reason because of that word. What do you guys think? There, there's the. If you guys want to pause it just to read the thing. There's not many clues in that. Yeah, there's. it's... On this wild adventure, you have to be brave, but at the end, we'll promise there'll be new yums to crave. I think kawaii is probably a big keyword indicator there. It's the only keyword indicator. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll see in a month. Let's see. We've got some, some trivia on Austria. Also, some various cool places that are you can visit and see in Austria. Let's do the very first thing that we get in the box, which is Kelly's American Pizza Rolls. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> Their take okay. on pizza. Yeah, new American style. They look like covers. I guess because pizza is such a big thing here in the States that um, that is an ostrich on the back. Corn and potato snack pizza flavored. After World War II, an American soldier named Major Howard Morse Kelly decided that instead of returning to America after the war, he would stay in Austria. His, he and his Austrian business partner, Herbert Rost, or Rast, founded the American Popcorn Company in 1955. They've created a whole bunch of different things, but uh, this is meant to taste like American pizza, which I guess tastes different than Italian pizza. So, huh. Let's see. Oh, they're like, uh, they look like Cheetos, almost. Corn Samoa, uh, 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 you can actually try these. Okay. 
is what they're like little tubes. You can see that. They do have a smell to them. They don't smell like pizza. Doesn't really taste like pizza either. I think I'm smelling like a tomato flavoring. So it's like sauce. <coughs> okay. Want to try them? Sure. They're crunchy. It tastes like sauce. Yeah. They're not terrible. No. But they're not great either. So, mediocre face? Yeah. This is something you could probably just sit in front of the TV and start snacking Mindlessly munching? Mm-hmm. Because it's not overly powering at all. Mm-mm. I mean, I've had like five of them. More than that, but yeah. <laughs> They're but, okay. Yeah, not bad. Okay. Oh. Ooh. That's why we don't have the dogs in here. I'm coming after all this. I've been dropping. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and you're back. <laughs> and I'm back. So next thing is Kasali Shoko Banana Minis. Like little mini bananas. See, I like me some chocolate covered bananas. And that's what these look like. Mm-mm-mm. So the dude back in the 1700s started a rum company, and then back in 1913, Aldo Adolf Beer took over the company and started doing fresh tropical fruits. He used real Chiquita bananas to create a banana puree, which he whipped into a light and fluffy mousse and covered in rich dark chocolate. Huh. Yeah, this is all sorts of Austrian on the back, so I... I Does it say on the booklet? Okay, that's fine. Ooh, big old whiff of bananas, man. Oh, they're cute. Yeah, looks like little banana turds, you know? <laughs> oh! It's like a mousse. Yeah. It's foot. Ooh, that's banana -y. It's really. Kind of tastes like have marshmallow consistency. I mean, those are banana. -y. I really like those. Hmm. Smiley face. Okay. Dust off your mustache. You got pizza. Pizza roll. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. So the next thing is our torta kitten apple strudel. So I guess it's apple apple strudel. So what it looks like. There's some big things in this box. That's a big thing, man. It looks like it's already in half too. It looks like wafer filled with apple cinnamon flavor cream. I know the strudel's really big over there. You can ponder why the state of Texas made the Austrian apple strudel their official state pastry in 2003. We did? Apparently so. We live in Texas, guys. <laughs> uh, but that's... They just give you some kind of like little trivia on it, but... Hmm. It looks like a giant wafer cookie. Oh, it's like little wedges. Hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's really good. You can't have it. it for sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make can eat the good stuff. It has milk, 
and skim milk powder in it. Okay. This is fantastic. Oh, crap. <laughs> mm, good. <laughs> Stop trying to get your mouth full. It's really good. <laughs> I need to find this. I found you those other things. I'll find you these. Hmm. It might be kind of hard. It says distributed by Universal Yums LLC. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. That was, that was fantastic. Those are really good. Um, okay, next thing. I'm liking Austria so far. So, Peschinger Hazelnut Rigel. Hazel Hazelnuss Rigel. So I'm guessing it's got hazelnuts in it. Yeah, it's got hazelnuts in the front. That's what it looks like there. Um, in 1849, the Austrian baker Oscar Peschinger found great fortune with a very simple creation. His moneymaker, a super thin wafer, wafer, uh, light wafer cookie that flew off the shelves during the late 1800s. Why? The wafers were a crucial part of a beloved cake recipe called the Peschinger Tort. But to make the cake, Peschinger thin wafers were laid on top of each other with a delicate coating of chocolate spread between each wafer. After a stack of 12 wafers was added, they were covered in melted chocolate coating to finish off the cake. It's laborious, but well worth it. Yeah, you can have this because it's got milk all galore in it. Yeah. Well, it looks like milk chocolate. They like their wafers. Oh, yeah. I like wafers too. <laughs> That's okay. Mediocre. probably weirded me out because it's real chocolate. It's not the fake stuff. Like it's got real ingredients in it. Right. I'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10. That's a smiley face. Yeah, okay. We can smiley face that one. Yeah. The next thing is by Kelly's. It's made of those other things which are Kelly's Paprika Mini Fritz. After the first bite, you might be tempted to call these mini potato sticks barbecue flavored, but you'd be wrong. Yes, we said it wrong. These potatoes are actually tossed in a unique blend of paprika, which is popular chip flavoring in Europe. Hmm. The flavor palette's been around since the late 1800s. Paprika flavored. Oh. They look like potatoes. Yeah, they are potatoes. <laughs> And these have cheese powder in them too, so you can't have them. I'm sorry. <laughs> four months, guys. I've been doing this for four months. Oh, these look exactly like cheese sticks. Like baby shoestring cheese sticks. They're like smoky. Not barbecue. Paprika smoky. Yeah. Those are really pretty good. No, they're not barbecue. They're very paprika y. That's a word. It is today. I don't get the cheese flavoring though. I get more of the paprika. Yeah. These are pretty good though. I think they're better than the other ones. The other... The other... Uh, Tilly little, snack? Let me try. <laughs> yeah. I like the mini fritz better. 
Okay, because we gave the pizza ones a, a neutral face. Yeah. Okay. More wafer stuff. <laughs> lemon creep filled wafers. Manor lemon wafers. A lot of these people have been around since the late 1800s. Good quality items. Hmm. Yosef Manor made them in 1898. Not these particular package right here. These are, these are 100 year old wafers. But they're all natural. May contain traces of tree nuts and milk. Only may contain though. It doesn't have milk as an actual thing. Then I would I'm like seeing. to try one, please. Okay. It's like a gum package. <laughs> Kind of difficult to open. Yeah. Well, they're very, like, crumbly, too. Oh! So they break off into, like, little pieces here. Cute little wafer sticks. Those are lemony. They're pretty good, though. I'm not a big lemon fan. But man, those taste like lemon. Those aren't bad. Mm. You like those? Mm-hmm. So, do uh, another one? Mm-hmm. Okay. They're very real lemon flavor. Yes. Well, it says all natural. No, I know, but you can tell. Oh, yeah. It's like the oil from the rind of a lemon. Mm-hmm. Oh, pretty good. You can have those for later. Mm-hmm. See, next page. More pincher flavored things, or pincher made things. Mandel Eck. If you're someone that always goes for the corner piece, you'll love this. Eck means corner in German. And this little wafer is meant to represent the tiny sliver that you would have made up the best part of the Oscar Pinger's famous tort cake. Huh. Crunchy corner pieces. Yeah. I like crunchy corner I can't have that, no, but I like crunchy corner pieces. <laughs> Here we go. More wafers. That's good stuff. <laughs> Holy crap. What does it taste like? Like cake. That has like liquor in it. It has liquor in it? Mm hmm. Mmm. Holy shit. <laughs> Really good. This box is making me search the internet for things. <laughs> Those are fantastic. Okay, make. We're gonna have to I make have another one for later. Oh, okay. We'll have to make notes though of what of what we need to. Mm, this was pretty good too, but those are good. Hmm. I need to find like a full size cake of that because that. Um, I'll try. I'll try geez. to figure that one out. Um, okay. Next thing. I guess it is in this little bag here. <clears throat> is Ew. No, you're missing is that the order? Oh, wait. Is? Okay, next thing. Yeah, it's these. Okay, never mind. It was the next thing after this. These are Heindel Himbeer Raspberry Chocolates. Mm, I bet that's my Husband good. in 1953, husband and wife team Walter and Maria Hindle began making chocolate filled concoctions in Vienna. 24 years later, their two children, Walter and Andreas, or Andreas, craft and uh, began working for their parents' company and continued the tradition. Right out. Looks like a big old truffle ball there. Like a truffle. Gooey thunder. Mm -hmm. That's raspberry, man. 
It's a good raspberry. I like those. Mm -hmm. Oscar is killing it. He gets all smileys except the mm -hmm. pizza bites. <laughs> well, Germany's box was pretty good too. Mm -hmm. That was. I liked Israel's box. Germany was December, right? They had something like yeah. that. Yeah. I think this is better than Germany so far. What were you saying about Israel? I liked it because I could try everything, almost oh, everything. Yeah. It was all kosher. <coughs> yeah. This is definitely not. No. <laughs> this has all sorts of dairy in it. Um. This is what you weren't happy about. Yes. Coconut? Yeah, it's got milk in it. Um, Blash <coughs> coconut macaroons. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not even going to read it. I just know it's going to, I'm not going to like it. Because it's going to have to coconut flakes in it. <coughs> looks. It's dipped it looks in okay. chocolate. We'll just put a, a frowny face on that one right away. It's got real coconut in it. Yeah. If you like coconut, you would love that. He doesn't like the texture of coconut. Nope. <laughs> Two more things. So the next thing is Sissy Taller. It's the namesake of the candy. was born in 1837 in Bavarian royalty. Um, they married a bunch of people. It's basically after a historic, famous uh, Hungarian person. Which the, was it the Habsburgs? Or in Hungary? I don't know. It's like chocolate. Yeah, you can't have this. That's okay. I got the lemon things for later. Oh, it's like squishy inside. Do you feel betrayed? What the what? It's like florally something inside. No. Oh. It's like a gooey stuff. Are there crunchy things in there? It, it tastes good. I was not expecting it. Oh, okay. Makes more sense now. Apricot marzipan is on oh, that side. Oh, yep. It's that almond flavor. Mm-hmm. Well, you could taste the apricot. Yeah, and it's kind of florally. It's that taste. Good? Yeah. Okay. Just caught you off guard. It's like a chocolate-covered apricot. We had that in one of these boxes. That was really good. Mm-hmm. It's like, the U.S. needs to do that. Oh, Germany. <laughs> I don't remember which one it was. It was really good, though. We got one more thing, which is this dude. He's hanging okay. out. It's like another chocolate. Uh, it's Mozart. Oh, it looks like that's remember Mozart was in the mm -hmm. clues. Heindel Mozart Kugel. Why is Mozart's face on this chocolate? Why is it named for him? Did he love eating chocolate while composing the symphonies? Actually, you might already know the answer to some of these if you know got our December box from Germany. In our German box, we featured Leibniz biscuits, which were named for Wilhelm Leibniz, who invented calculus. Both Leibniz biscuits and Wilhelm Leibniz came from Hanover, Germany. At the time, it was common for business owners in Europe to name their products for famous people who were born in the region where the product was invented, which is why these chocolates were named after Mozart. He was born in Salzburg, Austria, where these chocolates were first created in 1890. Hmm, that's cool. Okay. I didn't say what's in the chocolate. Dark chocolate. Oh. Chocolate liqueur, hazelnuts, almonds, sugar, milk, a bunch of stuff. So there's gonna be nuts inside. Hmm. And some nougaty stuff. Oh, it's marzipan. Yeah. Yep. Marzipan ball. Is it good? Yeah, it's not bad. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. 
It's a pretty small box this month. It was very small. But, I will say that very high quality box with everything that came in it. Like the quality of things that you got in here were very good. I think my favorite thing was, oh shoot. The cake thing or the lem or the apple crudel. Apple strudel. <laughs> so we had one frowny face because of the coconut. But if you like coconut guys, you'd really like it. We had two so-so faces and the rest were all happy faces. Two yums. So we had this little guy, the pincher cake, pinch, pinchinger, pinchinger. Corner piece cake. Yeah, and then the apple strudel. I think it's a tie between the two. Do I need to go look, look those up? Excellent. Now, well, okay, let me say this. This, I'd probably be only to eat small amounts of it because it's so rich. The strudel stuff, you could probably eat more because it's lighter. It's like a wafer cookie. So maybe the apple strudel is my favorite because I can have more of it. Okay. Well, I don't know. They're both really good. I liked the lemon things, but that's one of the only that's, things I yeah, can eat. I mean, that's the only thing you can have. And the pizza thing. Pizza things are okay. I'll probably snack on them. Yeah. And then the lemons were really good. Those banana things were pretty good, too. It was like a banana fluff. Yeah. Just pink in the middle. I smell those. They smell exactly like banana. Chocolate covered bananas. Mm -hmm. Those smell good. They smell really good. Well, uh, next month, your guess is Japan? My guess is Japan. Yeah, I think Japan or like one of the Koreas. I don't know if they've done a Korean thing yet, but I don't mm -hmm. think the sun always rises in Korea. I think it's Japan. Okay. <laughs> well, that's like the saying, you know, where the sun always rises. Yeah, I don't know. Well, no, because Japan is the house of the rising sun. I don't know. I don't know. Let us know what you guys think next month's box is. Uh, if you like this video, guys, hit that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments about anything in the video or things that we do on the channel, down below, or hit us up on BeardlyHonest.com. Uh, we've also got, I mean, we, we respond to pretty much all the comments that come through the videos, so don't feel, don't feel shy. But if you do feel shy, you can hit us up at BeardlyHonest at gmail.com. We do respond to those emails as well. Feel free to share this video as you see fit, guys. And as always... Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And until then, have a nice day.